and welcome to this Thursday edition of Big Game Bound alongside Jared Payton, the son of sweetness. I'm Chris Hagan. We are out here, SoFi Stadium. The countdown is dwindling. It's almost Super Bowl weekend and also it's downright hot out here. It's all good though. The, the weather is perfect. Back at home, it's snowy, so we get an opportunity to have some shorts on, short sleeve shirts. It's not, uh, we don't have to play on Sunday. You gave away my secret, I'm wearing short pants. I'm supposed to look professional, and here you are going, oh, you're wearing uh, shorts. No, I said other people are wearing shorts exactly. around here. I tell you what, though, not only is it hot, we're talking about maybe a record-setting hot Super Bowl. The record is like 84. This game may reach the 90s. It's not really football weather, but as an athlete, you're conditioned, you're ready for the weather. It takes you back to training camp, maybe. You've you've had some hot games, you've come this far. It's not You're not gonna be taken out by the weather. Well, I don't think so, but I think that plays into the hands of the Rams. This is what they practice in. This is what they see every single day. For the Bengals, even being in Cincinnati, it's cold there, so they're practicing inside. You can't really kind of measure how that's gonna kind of play out, but for the Rams, it kind of plays in their favor. It's kind of like in some, you know, you play in altitude in Denver, you know, yes. Denver's used to playing there. That's the yeah. difference for a visiting team. The weather could be as well. I saw last night, I was watching the local news, and out here, it was the hottest in the country. This was the hottest place to be in the United States. The previous record for the Super Bowl, 84 degrees also out here in L.A. So uh, that could just add a dynamic, as, as Jared said. It may add a little something extra. We talk about trying to get used to the weather. Uh, the Bengals got a little practice in yesterday for the first time since making the trip out. Yeah, and for them, this is going to be that opportunity to kind of get used to the weather, get their legs underneath them, because it's going to be a battle on Sunday, Chris. I mean, we're talking about two good teams, and the reason why they're both here is what they did through the regular season and the postseason and so you know coming out here getting used to the weather just a little bit still it's not going to help them probably a lot on game day but when you get a chance to play in the Super Bowl man it doesn't really matter it's all out well the Bengals they don't want to be playing catch up like they had to uh, early in these playoffs you don't want it to go in the fourth quarter and maybe that conditioning coming to play let's hear what Joe Burrow had to say about making sure you're not having another game like you did out there in Kansas City yeah well we'd like to start out fast you know when they have a really good pass rush so when they you know the team's dropping back and, and throwing the ball. You know they can kind of tee off, so we want to get out to a strong start. But you know whatever the game calls for us, for for to for us to win, we're going to go out and do. If we get behind early, you know we're not going to panic. So you know maybe a, a comeback is going to be necessary, but you know we'd like to jump out early and kind of control the game. It does give you some confidence to know, like if you look up at the scoreboard before the half and you're down 10, you know 14 points. Hey, let's not panic. We've been here before. Yeah, they've been there before, but they're going up against a really good defense. <laughs> so this is going to be it's going to be different. The Bengals have to find a way to keep this thing close if they want to have a way to be able to win on Sunday. I think it's going to be hard, but both offenses we know are electric, Chris, and anything can happen when you're in a setting like this, especially playing in a, in a stadium like this. Everybody says fast track. That could mean a lot of scoring. You know, Super Bowls can produce future Hall of Famers. This is where you build your resume. Anybody playing tonight, though, is going to have to, I mean, Sunday's going to have to wait five more years. But tonight, the wait is over for a few folks. And we have some finalists, 15 finalists, JP. Yeah. What do you think? Who do you like? Uh, what are we talking about tonight? Let's not be biased, by the way. What do you mean, not be biased? Are you <laughs> kidding me? If Devin Hester is not a first ballot Hall of Famer, we riot in Chicago. It just, it has to happen. I'm telling you right now. When you talk about the best at a position, he is that guy. He changed the game and how people on special teams played against the Bears when he was dominant at his time. To me, there's a lot of good names on this list. Devin Hester should be going in tonight. We're talking about guys like uh, Devin Hester, Torrey Holt, Andre Johnson, wide receiver, uh, Richard Seymour still waiting his turn, Zach Thomas. Now, Reggie Wayne in Super Bowl 41, oh, yes. your boy Devin Hester scored a touchdown, but Reggie Wayne also had a big right. game-changing touchdown as well. Why do you got to do this, man? I know he's a Colt, but also, too, he's a Miami Hurricane. Exactly. So, yeah, I want him to get in it as well. Reggie, when you look at Reggie's numbers, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. It's, uh, I mean, it's an honor just to be among those guys in the discussion, those 15 guys. But you know, there's gonna, it's going to be heartbreak city for some. It's going to be elation for others. Yeah, and that's what's so great about this, this opportunity is tonight, a lot of those guys wearing the gold jacket are going to be able to kind of honor and welcome in a new class that's coming in. And talking with a lot of those guys, they always say that that's one of their biggest moments, especially here on Super Bowl week. Well, the good thing about Super Bowl week as well, you see these gold jacket guys <laughs> roaming around. You see these Hall of Famers. And nobody is ever afraid to talk to JP over here. Well, I'll tell you this, Chris. Uh, when it comes to gold jackets, the guy that I talk to, yeah, Barry Sanders, he is my running back uncle. And I had a <laughs> chance to be able to catch up with him here at Super Bowl. Take a listen to our interview. Yeah, so 
Matthew Stafford spent all this time in Detroit. You got a chance to see him with that Detroit Lions jersey on for years. Now he comes out to L.A. He gets an opportunity to be able to get a Lombardi trophy. Are people like yourself and people back in Detroit, are they rooting for him a little bit? Uh, you ask me, am I jealous of him? Are, am I jealous? Is that, is that what you're asking me? <laughs> no, hey, look, he's, he's in a great situation. As a player, I, I love just seeing kind of what he's been able to surround himself with or what they surround him with. Um, you look at this team, man, I mean, um, he, he just fell into a great situation, perfect situation for him. And it is interesting because, you know, watching him for the past, you know, decade plus in Detroit, you, all, you hear all these comments, okay, can he do this, can he do that, can he win the big one, whatever. Um, and just, you know, look at what he's done this year, look at what he's done this season. Um, so to me, it's, it's been amazing. I, 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 you know, I think he's probably has as much to prove in this game as anyone, um, you know, and uh, it's just been exciting to see what he has been able to do this season. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of fans in Detroit, you know, that that are on both sides of it, you know, but I'm, I'm rooting for him. When you think about his career, I mean, he got all the numbers to be in the Hall of Fame. All he's missing is this Lombardi trophy. As that happens, you think you'll see him in Canton? I, I think so. I think you know what, what I think is interesting too is that you look at look at um, kind of what he's played with in Detroit um, and who he's been up against, right? He every, so every year he's up against Aaron Rodgers in that division, right? You know, and and, and more recently um, up against Kirk Cousins and guys like that. And you're trying to figure out, okay, where 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 does he fit, right, in that conversation? Um, you know, and again, I say this season, I think he's really answered where you know uh, pretty clearly where he fits um you know so as far as canton i mean hey look I, you know the, the numbers that the guy has is amazing he's still i mean he, he still still looks young he has many years ahead of him um you know and so that those things will take care of themselves um and you know obviously this week is a big big step toward that well the lions only had three wins but they were in a lot of close games dan campbell the head coach <laughs> is, <laughs> a lot of people are hot and cold with him, but it seems like the guys inside of that locker room, they want to play for him. Do you think he could be the guy to kind of turn things around in Detroit? I think so, and, and I hope so. And I don't, I don't know how many kneecaps were bitten off uh, this season and, <laughs> and all that stuff. But you, you know what I saw I, I, at the end of the season, um, because it was a rough start, and and um, we lost some tough ones. But you know, you, I look at. You know, if you look at the last month and a half or so, um, I saw some pretty good football. You know, that's when they really won the three games. Uh, any, anytime you lose double-digit games, then obviously you got some things to fix. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we um, you know, ended the season beating a division rival, um, you know, and even um, at the end of the season got a, a, another win against uh, Phoenix. Um, you know, so so yeah, I think there's some promising things. I, I think, you know, you look at the season as a whole, uh, and, and really, it's, it really depends on you know how you really want to view it and look at it and what your mentality is. Are you, you know, because no one's going to give you anything in this league, and so no one feels sorry for you that you lost 13 games. Um, but sometimes that's that can be good for you because you know they sh they should have enough motivation going into next season that. Um, you know, they're, 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 the, the culture's changed. Um, they're going to change change the script, um, and that's what we're hoping to do. You're teaming up with Rocket Mortgage for that Super Bowl squares. Tell me a little bit about what you got going on this year. Some changes I see with just the format of what people can win. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's just really giving fans a chance to win a lot of cash during the big game. Um, you know, so the way it works is every score change, Rocket Mortgage is going to give away $50,000. Um, two grand prizes uh, that they'll give away at halftime and the end of the game at uh, half a million dollars. Um, you know, and, and um, you know, if you recommend, you, you get on there and you sign up and recommend a friend, they'll, they'll, you may win additional squares. You can go to rockandmortgagesquares.com to learn more about it. The entry window closes uh, this Friday at midnight. It's free to play. Um, so, so, yeah, it's a great way for fans to, another great way for fans to really interact with the game. Um, you know, and possibly win some cash. When you look at this matchup, you get a chance to see the Bengals and the Rams. Who's going to be hoisting that Lombardi Trophy on Sunday? Well, I, I love the matchup personally. 
and with the you know we talked about the Matthew Stafford part of it and and just the um, you look at that roster man look at that the Rams roster my goodness um, but obviously the Bengals coming through sort of the gauntlet of NFL season and playoffs of teams they had to be to be here and you got to be impressed you look at you look at all the playoff games close overtime um, back and forth surprises uh, so you you know so yeah I I would tend to lean I would tend to lean toward the Rams um, just because you know I think they have a little more firepower but you know um, it, it should be a great one if you had an opportunity to run up against Aaron Donald and all that front seven back in your day they wouldn't stand a chance though probably right <laughs> it depends on it depends on where you're talking about a young Barry or like an older Barry. I'm talking about you know? the younger. I'm talking about the younger <laughs> Barry. Well, I I don't know, man. It would have been a good good match, <laughs> been, been a really good matchup. Absolutely, you know. So, who knows? I'm gonna tell him right now. It's fun to think about. They ain't messing with it. About. They ain't messing with this guy. It's fun man. to think about. Yeah. Appreciate you. Absolutely, man. My money is on Young Barry against anybody, against Any, the world. Anybody, man. Like, it's so cool, Chris, to talk to these goats where you have an opportunity to see the guys that I watched growing up and to see, like, how you could mix and match and where they would be. And that's what makes you a goat, when you can put one of those guys in any different era and they would still do what they did. And that's what makes them great. That's what makes guys like that go get gold jackets. Yeah, that's what you say. You know, oh, he wouldn't play in this era. He couldn't oh, play that. And you're like, no, no, certain guys, you put them out there, give them a football, they're going to go. Yeah, they're going to go. And I think that's what makes them special. But hearing him talk about Matthew Stafford, and you know the love that he has for him and that the city you know Detroit has for him as well I think a lot of people are rooting for him to be able to get this championship and what it would mean for his legacy as one of the best quarterbacks to ever play this game what was funny to me was even he referenced the biting off the kneecaps <laughs> pork he could win five Super Bowls as a head coach and they're still gonna say they're gonna bring bring back that opening press conference where he's biting off kneecaps. Hey, but you gotta you gotta have someone to be able to <laughs> rally the troops, and hopefully Dan Campbell can figure that out in Detroit. Well, speaking about uh, getting your kneecaps bitten off, uh, <laughs> Joe Burrow got his kneecaps crushed like nine times in that super. I mean, in that playoff game at the ten Tennessee, uh, your old stomping grounds. Let's uh, Peyton's picks for today. We've talked running backs, we've talked wide receivers. Let's get to the good stuff now. Let's get to the quarterbacks, and we'll start with Joe Burrow. Some of his numbers. There's always you know, it's always different from the regular season to the postseason, but sure. look at him. Uh, led the league, 70.4% completion rate, 64%, so not much of a drop off when he was under pressure, but there's the big number, the sacks. Yeah, yeah you can't do I just don't know if they can kind of come back from that if he's getting sacked a lot on Sunday. And so the that offensive line for Cincinnati has to be on top of their game. And that was a league high, 51 sacks, 34 TDs against 14 interceptions. Now, as far as the postseason goes, Completion rate just a little bit down, but not as much. But the big drop under pressure, he drops to 47% completion ratio. Is that just because they turn the heat up in the postseason? Yeah, they definitely do, and they're dialing up just a little bit more. They understand once you start breaking down film where some of the weaknesses are on that offensive line. So, yeah, a lot more pressure coming his way in the postseason. 12 sacks, of the bulk of those coming in Nashville. Four TDs against just two picks. Now, as for the other QB, oh, we just heard Barry talking about Matthew Stafford. He's rooting for him. Look at these numbers he, he put up in the regular season. Yeah, you definitely got to love the Look at the passing yards. Third in the NFL, over close to 5,000 yards. 41 touchdowns, second most in the NFL. But you look at the interceptions, 17 interceptions, most in the NFL. But the last three playoff games, 905 yards, six touchdowns, only one interception. So he's dialed it back just a little bit more in the postseason. But still, even with the thought of throwing interceptions when you air it out with a bunch of wide receivers that you have at his disposal, one thing's for sure, Matthew Stafford isn't afraid to take shots down the field. Probably born with some of it, um, wanting to be aggressive. Um, but at the same time, you got to learn from every experience, whether it be good or bad, right? Sometimes you uh, you give guys chances and, and they go up there and make plays for you, and sometimes it doesn't work out for you, and you got to assess why, you know, one way happened or the other way happened, you know? I look at across the ball, um, you know, as, and at the Cincinnati Bengals and, and look at Joe Burrow and, and uh, Jamar Chase, and, I mean, that's, you know, it's, that's about as good a chemistry as you can get when it comes to down-the-field shots, of, you know, giving Jamar an opportunity, and he's done an unbelievable job of coming down with a bunch of them, and, and same with T. Higgins and some of their other guys as well. So it's part, about, it's part of playing this position at this level um, is being confident in yourself, being confident in the guys around you, and understanding, 
you know, when it's an appropriate time to take certain shots and when it's not. Matthew Stafford, Hall of Famer, or does a lot depend on what happens on Sunday and moving forward? I, I think it, a lot depends on if he can win this game on Sunday. I mean, when you look at his numbers as a whole, what he did while he was in Detroit, yeah, he put up the numbers. He just didn't have some of that hardware to go along with it. If he wins this, to me, that solidifies him. He needs this Super Bowl to be able to say, yeah, I deserve that Canton invitation. A lot of folks watching uh, the NFL Honors tonight will find out about the Hall of Famers. We talked about that, but something very near and dear to your heart. We're talking about the Walter Payton Man of the Year, 32 great nominees. You want to go ahead and whisper uh, who wins? No, I go? can't. I can't because I know people are betting so on So wait, are somewhere. you saying you know? I do not know at this moment. You Still promise? Don't know. I promise on everything. Our friendship. Okay, then. You heard it right here. If, if he turns around and tells his producer, Rick, who it is, I'm going to be very, very upset. I would rather fill his pockets than yours, but you're still my guy, though. Hey, give okay, me some. okay. Yes, well, that's that's an awesome thing. And do you know who the first winner of the award ever was with the name Walter Payton attached to the Man of the Year award? Chris Carter. Well, what a great segue, and what a coincidence. I just spoke with him earlier today at Radio Row. Check it out. Out here at Radio Row with Chris Carter, the Hall of Famer, former Man of the Year, the first time ever it was the Walter Payton Man of the Year award. How special an honor was that for you? Well, for me, it's a little bit different because Walter and I have a little bit of history. Um, one of my boyhood idols um, was a football player by the name of Todd Bell. Um, he was from my hometown, tremendous athlete, and went to Ohio State. And then I played Little League from the first time I played football with his brother, Sean. So Todd was our hero. He was drafted by the Chicago Bears. Walter Payton was the <laughs> captain of the team. So then going through my life and um, – and seeing the things I was able to overcome, and that's what Walter Payton, his whole spirit was about. And it's just amazing, the National Football League partnered with Nationwide, what they're able to do as far as keeping it alive and making it even more prominent in his passing and his death, his legacy is greater um, than it's ever been. So being able to win something like that, um, that has his name on it, and the spirit of him and what he was about as a human being, I and mean, as a football player, because the standards are very, very high in winning the award as far as what are you doing in your community? Are you the best on your team? And then do you play football at the highest level that it possibly could be played? So tremendous, tremendous honor. My gold jacket and the Walter Payton, they sit right next to each other. You think about, you know, guys nowadays up for this award, they don't remember Walter Payton playing like we do. Mm -hmm. And it's good to have that name out there because now guys, they'll go to YouTube. They'll go check it out and go, who was this guy? What was so special? And, man, there wasn't many much more special than Walter. Right. I think that, um, you know, the NFL and Nationwide has done a good job as far as the things we've put in front of the players, not only about Walter Payton, but then the generation that I played in, then Jerome Bettis and some of the other great men, not only on the field, but what they're doing off the field or once they've retired from the game. So I think we do a good job of putting um, pitchers in front of these guys. And that's why the bar has risen so high because of the visibility, not only on the award, but the standards with inside the award that I think that they understand that the spirit of Walter Payton, I think that they understand the standard for which he played to their parents, their grandparents, they all understand what Walter Payton meant. So I think they understand. It's cool now, too, is all the teams have a nominee. you got 32 guys. Mm -hmm. It's not just the three finalists, so it's something right. league-wide. And now tonight we'll find out who takes that. Yeah. We'll find out who gets in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. I just remember your journey getting to the Hall of Fame. When you find out, when you finally get that call, relief, joy, tears, laughter, what was that moment like, finding out I'm, I'm going to be in? Right. The first thing about all the nominees, there are no losers. Mm -hmm. Even though they do nominate 32 people, um, Nationwide has done a good job as far as honoring all these people because – we have 31 people that finish in second, but they also receive a very, very healthy donation to their charity. Outside the winner, the winner's gonna get 250,000. Um, the people that don't win, they get 40,000. So that right there, they're able to do a lot of things within the communities that are very, very important. But there's nothing like getting a call from the hall. Um, it's an answer to all the questions. And it's also, it, t it talks about the journey um, in football and all the people typically that have helped you get there. Ohio guy, not far from Cincinnati. You got any faith? You're rooting for these Bengals? Are they going to close out this storybook season? I mean, it's a great story for the Brown family. Um, people in Ohio do love football. Um, it's their second favorite team besides the, <laughs> besides the Buckeyes. 
But it, you know, it's a tough matchup. You know, they've had a magic carpet ride getting here. Um, they have a transcendent talent in Joe Burrow the, to be able to see him do what he did on the road in the playoffs is exceptional. Um, the Rams have a very good team. I'm concerned about the Bengals offensive line. I'm concerned about will the Bengals run the football. If they rush for over 100 yards, I think they're seven and one um, this season. So the Rams have more talent, but the magic of this playoffs is no one knew what was going to happen. And I think it will finish on Sunday with an exciting, exciting game in Super Bowl 56. And last thing for you, those Bengal fans may be coming to town. They got to go to the they got to go to the checkbook to get in this game. Would you say, hey, this could be once in a lifetime. It's, it's a good investment to get in there and, and see your squad go. Uh, the Super Bowl, what they provide, the pregame entertainment, um, the game, the halftime show. I'm a huge hip hop fan. <laughs> Snoop, Dre, what they're going to put together at halftime. It's, it's the NFL. There's no better product out there. And um, I'm just very, very fortunate to be associated for the last five decades. I'm fortunate, um, the NFL. Um, all the things I've accomplished there, and I'm fortunate to be partners with Nationwide and able to talk about the things that they deem to be important. You talk about uh, the halftime show. Chris Carter, Hall of Famer, loves football. He's excited about that, but he's a little bit more excited, sound like, about the halftime show. What do you think? I mean, you have to be excited about the halftime show. We're talking about Dre, Mary J. Blige, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick Lamar. I mean, Right there in LA. Are you going to turn into a fanboy and start jumping around? And I'm going to be on the field pregame. That's what I'm afraid of. To, gonna, no, I'm going to be on the field pregame to hand out the <laughs> Walter Payton Man of the Year award with my sister and Russell Wilson. So we'll be out there. I'm going to try to stay down as long as possible before I have to go to my seat and maybe slip into the crowd that runs out to watch the performance, and then I'll FaceTime you. I've seen you like you and your mom. You like TikTok doing a little dance. We do. We do. TikToks. I think you could be a, a background dancer. Just kind of. You know, you know me so sneak, well. Sneak your way out there. That would be great stuff. Uh, let me ask you this. Yes, sir. When you think about that Walter Payton Man of the Year Award and you hear Chris talking about it with such, such reverence, he says that trophy's right there by my gold jacket. And like you said, we've talked before, some folks get as, you know, they want this like they yes. want the MVP. This they is do. a huge deal for every player in the league. Huge honor just to even be nominated and have yourself coming out here. Yeah, and it switched, you know, from, you know, three – finalists to now you have 32 finalists from each team so we're getting a chance to highlight more of what these guys are doing in their communities and giving back in service and so to have a guy that's a pioneer like Chris Carter talk about it and still kind of you know have it close to his heart and he does is linked up with Nationwide and really giving back to getting more people more aware of what's going on I told you this the other day it's it's weird I talked to Peanut Tillman he said to him to me he keeps that thing close to him. All the guys that have it, when you see them, if they're on TV, it's right behind them. Eli Manning, uh, Kurt Warner, when they're doing their live shots at home. So it, I know what it means, and I just think that my dad would just be so filled with so much joy to know that all these guys truly love this award. And I know you, you and Brittany both will hear stories about people that – like liked your dad from afar or met yeah. your dad. They talk about him on the football field, but just as many will talk about some interactions they yeah. had with him in person. Yeah, more about that. We hear more about that than the football. And to me, that's what makes it special, and that's what helps keep his legacy alive. And, man, we're going to keep doing that, man. And I just look forward to seeing adding a new member to the Walter Payton Man of the Year family on uh, tonight. And then we'll talk about them more on Sunday. And when you're, I mean, when you're a superstar athlete, let's face it, you could just live in your house and keep to yourself. Yeah. But so many of these guys, they, they don't take that for granted, and they want to give back. And to me, that, that says a lot about it because, uh, as you've said before, a lot of times making the headlines, it's that one guy that stepped out of line, and you don't see the vast majority of guys that are out there doing the right thing. Yeah, most guys are doing the right thing, and these guys are coming into a city where they're playing at. And Chris Carter talked about this with me last night at an event we are at. He said, these guys are coming in, and they're, you can't just come in and take the money from the people in that town. you got to find a way before you're done to be able to give it back and reinvest into the community and show people that you really care and thank yous. And those are the thank yous that you can give back to your community. So all these guys that are nominated, all 32, that's what they're doing. And look forward to really highlighting that tonight at NFL Honors. You know, that's uh, the NFL has the Walter Payton Man of the Year. So for sports broadcasting, we're going to have the Jared Payton Man of the Year Award.
because I'm a nice guy. We'll, we'll get a trophy if you hold the microphone. Like you know? this? Yeah. It looks just, you don't got to flex. Somehow every day he finds a I'm way not trying to, to flex. flex. No. Oh, it's just always permanent just flex. Permanent flex. That's what happens. <laughs> He's got the permanent flex on some of these prop bets as well. <laughs> We've been showing you some of the different things. Obviously, you go out there, you can bet on one team, bet on the point spread, the over under. But how about we get a little froggy? And today, JP, what are we doing? we're talking all about some quarterback props. That's what we've been talking about. Total pass attempts over under 36. That's for both players. Mm. It's about one, minus 112 for each of them. What do you think about that? Uh, that? That's the team that's trailing, right? I mean, if you're winning this game, you're not you're going to be throwing it more than 36 times, are you? No, you're not. So, yeah, for the team that's trailing, I think uh, you got to figure out which one you think that is. I, I could be Joe Burrow. Now look at this though, here's where you see a huge favorite player to throw the most TDs. Mm. Stafford overwhelming, minus 157. You can make some money with Burrow at plus 125. It's so difficult to tell how this game's gonna play out. You, you hear, you even heard Chris Carter, if you can run the ball, you're gonna have success. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the team that's winning is gonna throw the most TDs. It doesn't mean the team that's winning is gonna have the most passing attempts. That's where you get inside the numbers for real. Yeah, and that's what's so difficult for all this when you think about it, right? So. Bet your money wisely, ladies and gentlemen. I would think I would take Burrow to throw more than 36 passes. And I would take, because I, I think I think they will be playing from behind, as yeah. they have in this postseason. But I would also take Burrow to throw more touchdown passes. And the worst thing is, this is true in fantasy football. Let's say you have a wide receiver, like I, I have Jamar Chase. He, he catches a pass. He runs it. They tackle him at the one-yard line. Because guess what? They don't throw it to him again from the one-yard line. They turn around and hand it to Joe Mixon, and Joe Mixon, he poaches my touchdown and my yeah, fantasy points. Sometimes, though, when if he gets one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, they like to throw him out there in that, that little, little little tiny fade in the back of the end zone. So you never know. But, yeah, I know what you're talking about as a fantasy owner myself. Is, who's your quarterback this year? Uh, this year? I didn't play this year. Well, the franchise has folded. Apparently, Jared's franchise has been yeah. pushed out of business. But uh, as we always say. Uh, 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 hold on. My, I was managing my son's team. Okay. Joe Burrow. Oh, well, look at this. Okay. No wonder you've been so high on Joe Burrow all you know year. What I'm and about. as we have fun talking about the prop bets, play responsibly. Don't don't go bet the 401k. Don't no. go bet the kids' child uh, college no. fund. No. But yeah, it is fun to look at some of these numbers because for the Super Bowl, they have everything out there in the world that you can wager on. And also the people that play the the football squares. Yes. You know, you hear you'll hear somebody cheering about. Uh, a safety. Like, well, what are you going so crazy for? They're still losing by 30. I had the square. That was yeah. my square, and I hit the numbers. I appreciate you for giving that disclaimer. I really, I don't like to spend my money. So after the show, you're gonna give me a couple of dollars that I could. I'll, give I'll give you a per diem. I think twenty dollars is enough for Jared to dip his toe in the world of, of wagering in the Super toe. Bowl. Yeah, let's and do it. And we're still waiting. You've been you've been evading it all all week long, Boy, trying to get you make a pick. Not yet, man. Still not that time. He's got to read the injury report. No, He's a I'm successful fantasy that. owner. I just want people to keep coming back to the stream so they can figure out who I'm going to pick. I can't give you that. And we appreciate the people that are supposed to be working right now. Maybe you're in your cubicle. You put the headphones on. You're acting like you're doing that, that flow chart. We love you. The sales graphic. But no, you're sitting here you. watching us two idiots talk. But <laughs> we're going to shut it down for today. But we are not done. We'll go Friday, Saturday, and game day on Sunday. And who knows what stars JP will talk to. But for right now, he's Jared Payton, the son of sweetness. I'm Chris Hagan. We'll see you next time on Big Game Bound.